Assalamu alaikum, dear students. So we continue our work with quantum mechanics. It is, we start with a new lesson now. It's lesson 3.3, wave particle duality. In this part, we will cover two main objectives. Let me read them together. Number one, describe and interpret qualitatively the evidence provided by electron diffraction for the wave nature of particles. And here we will study uh, De Broglie wavelength experiment uh, in order to prove uh, how the electron behaves like a wave. In the second part, uh, to recall and use relation of De Broglie wavelength. Okay? Here uh, we will concentrate on calculation and how we calculate De Broglie wavelength. Let we start together. Initially, uh, we start with the Broy experiment. Wave particle duality was the Broy 1924. So this experiment, as you see in front of you, the Broy uh, he was trying uh, to prove like particle behaves like a wave. Initially. Let me relate the things together. I prefer to relate things together before I continue. So what's proved by Planck and Einstein before, what's proved by them that light, light, which was considered as a wave in classical mechanics. They proved it as a particle, which is the photon. So what's done by Planck and Einstein, they proved wave particle. Wave, they proved the wave a particle, the particle. Okay. Now, what's, uh, uh, what's De Broglie trying to prove in his experiment? Let's say De Broglie, but usually they don't spell L. He was uh, trying to prove a thing opposite to what's proved before. So what's proved by Planck and Einstein that wave is a particle. Here he's trying to prove particle is a wave. So uh, he chose the electron, which is known as particle, 100% it's a particle, because it has a mass and momentum. So a uh, particle and its mass, it's known as 9.11 times 10 to the exponent minus 31 kg. So it was known 100% that at that time, that electron is a particle. So he was trying to prove it the wave. So the question, can we prove electron as a wave? This is what's done by Planck, by, sorry, De Broglie. So what he did, he used cathode ray tube and he directed a beam of electrons. So these uh, small uh, red points or dotted you observe in front of they are electron so they uh, direct them toward a graphite foil okay toward a graphite foil which is considered like diffraction grating so he found he found that these electrons they spread in different direction as you see forming a circular pattern of electron you see on the screen so uh, so this phenomena what we observe here so we observe diffraction where we saw this phenomena before, in diffraction, which means electrons, electrons undergoes, undergo, sorry, undergo diffraction. And all of us know diffraction is a property related to whom? To waves, not to particles. You see? So he realized that electron, so the conclusion here from this experimental, so this is experimental proof. So 
using the experiment, using what's observed, and using what's observed, what's observed, or what's proved in the Broy experiment that electrons they are particles but they behave like waves why because of diffraction they undergo diffraction this property related to whom who's doing diffraction waves from this point of view uh, uh, he considered that if 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 the electron undergoes diffraction so they should have wavelength because they are a wave they are waves they should have frequency so uh, from here what happens the Broyce uh, suggested that as you see uh, all moving particles if the electron behaves like a wave then, then any particle can behave like a wave you see uh, uh, so uh, all moving particles have wave like nature so from this experiment if electron behaves like a wave so the conclusion from here so we can consider or he considered here that if electron behaves like a wave behaves like a wave then any particle any particle can behave like a wave can behave like wave everything in nature all materials in nature so they have wavelengths they have okay but uh, he said here that these electrons the wavelength of these electrons they are very slow small it's close to the size you need to imagine like the wavelength of the electron it's approximately equal to the size or similar to the size of atom like the diameter of the atom so the uh, so the wavelength uh, uh, imagined by de Broglie or proved by de Broglie it is very very small wavelength. It's similar to the size of the atom times ten to the power minus ten meter. And to calculate this wavelength, we use this formula: the Broglie wavelength is equal to Planck's constant divided by the momentum of this electron so if we concentrate well on this formula it relates the wave aspect wave aspect with particle aspect with what particle aspect of electron so anybody has momentum means it's particle and anybody has wavelength means it's a wave you see so uh, uh, so this formula relates clearly the wave with the particle aspect of electrons or of any material so we know the wavelength in meter and the momentum in kilogram meter per second we can replace here momentum by mass times what uh, velocity as you see and what's this this is a planck's constant which is 6.63 times 10 exponent minus 34 joule second okay now let me start practicing on uh, de Broglie wavelength equation so we start with the question number one uh, calculate the de Broglie wavelength of an electron traveling with a speed 5.5 times 10 to the power 7 meter per second so we need to find the wavelength and we have the speed this is look like direct application of de Broglie equation so uh, we need to find the wavelength the wavelength as we know it's e so the wavelength equal to h over p or h over mv because i have a speed so it will be equal to h it's 6.63 times 10 exponent minus 34 joule second the mass of electron it's constant it's always given 9.11 times 10 exponent minus 31 kilogram and the speed of electron it's 5.5 times 10 7 exponent 7 meter per second okay 
So the after using calculator, so after using calculator, the answer will be the answer will be 1.32 times 10 exponent minus 11 meter. You see, it's close to 10 exponent minus 10, like the size of the atom. So this answer is accepted. So always when we calculate the Broglie wavelength, we check is the value close to this range, to the diameter of the atom, to the size of the atom, to check the validity or if the answer is accepted or rejected. Okay, we solve now another question, another application on the Broglie wavelength. We go to question two. We have an electron and a proton have same de Broglie wavelength. So he's giving me here, trying to give me an information. So that the de Broglie wavelength of electron equal to the de Broglie wavelength of uh, of proton. You see. So he's giving me here, we have given, <coughs> what is the ratio of their kinetic energy? So we're looking to find the kinetic energy of electron divided by the kinetic energy of uh, the proton. Okay. So to find the kinetic energy, to find this ratio, So it's equal again, it's the kinetic energy of electron divided by the kinetic energy of proton. So what's the formula of kinetic energy? It's half m mass of electron v of electron square divided by half mass of proton times v of proton square. Where we know here that because I don't have the way that the speed what's given, it's related to the wavelength. So if we use the formula of de Broglie wavelength, it's equal h over mv. So we can replace v by h in both equations, h over m lambda. You see? So that we can replace v by what? By h over mv up and down. So, but before doing that, we can get rid of. So, how how does they go together? We can cancel that. We can cancel or cross out half with half. So, the shape, the remaining shape, will be after some. So, here we have mass electron, and instead of v electron, we can write h square divided by mass uh, electron square uh, lambda mass electron. So mass of electron square, lambda square. Okay, lambda square. No need to write lambda electron because the wavelength of both are equal. So here, lambda of electron equal lambda of proton equal to the same de Broglie wavelength. Okay, so. Uh, in the denominator that we have mass of proton times h square over the mass of proton squared multiplied by again lambda square. Let we simplify the obtained form to get the answer. Here we can cancel h square and lambda square with h square lambda square. We can cancel the square of mass electron with mass electron, the square of mass proton with mass proton. So what's remained, what's remained uh, uh, after the, this whole simplification, mass of the proton divided by the mass of electron. So uh, if we substitute these masses, which are constant and it will be, it should be given, Okay, the final answer will be 1.83 times 10 to the power 3, which is answer B. Okay, so we continue with the question number 3. Let me read it together. Another application on deep equation. So 
So in the diagram uh, shown below, an electron is accelerated. And here, as you see, the electron is accelerated uh, due to the presence of uh, voltage, as you see, uh, between plates A and B. What is the de Broglie wavelength uh, of the electron when it strikes plate B? To find de Broglie wavelength, you need the speed, right? But here you don't have speed, but you have voltage. So from voltage, how to get speed? Using, I need to start with the idea. So as the first step, as the first step, I start with the idea that the kinetic energy gained equal to the potential energy lost. You see? So the kinetic energy, you remember the formula which says half and v squared equal EV stopping or EV. Here, same idea. So to calculate the speed, okay, which is due to this voltage, so to calculate the speed, uh, simply we rearrange this formula. We have everything. We have the mass of the electron. It's constant. E is constant. And voltage, it is between the two plates, which will be 150 minus zero, which will be 150 volt. Okay. As I need the, the, the maximum speed at, at this point after the whole acceleration. Okay. So initially, in the, the first step, I get the speed of this electron, the maximum speed, so which will be 2E capital V, the voltage between the plates, divided by mass electron square root. So this is the first step that we do it together. So 2 times 1.6 times 10 exponent minus 19 times 150 divided by the mass of the electron, which is 9.11 times 10 power minus 31. So here we get the speed of the maximum speed of electron, which is after using calculator, the, the speed of the electron will be, as you see, it is how much? 7, uh, seven millions, 258,743.17 meter per second. Okay. Now, from this maximum speed, we can calculate de Broglie wavelength because the aim is to find de Broglie wavelength, not the speed. So de Broglie wavelength as a second step, second step, what we do, we say de Broglie wavelength is equal H over mass electron V of the electron, which will be equal 6.63 times 10 to the power minus 34, this is 34, okay, divided by 9.11 times 10 to the power minus 31, Time is the speed we get 7258743.17. So after doing this calculation, we get 0 0.1 nanometer or 1 times 10 to the power minus 8 meter. This is the de Broglie wavelength. 